Okay, welcome back. Last time we finished off the Lancastrian side of the game, and today we're going to be starting up the second half of the game, where, we're, where we are instead going to be siding with the Yorkists, and basically playing through the villain side of the game. So uh, I'm just going to quickly skip this opening dialogue, or up until the choice, mostly because it's exactly the same. It basically just drops you back off at the choice to uh, basically which side you want. And this side, we can't, this time we can't click uh, to choose with the Lancastrians. We can try to scroll down and it'll just say, no, you can't. So we have to side with the Yorkists. A wise choice, duelist. I see you're well versed in judging a situation. Welcome to the Rose Crusaders. I am honored. Okay, old man, it's time you made yourself scarce. What? What are you doing? Stop! No! And with that, we will never see Simon McMoran again. Don't worry, I'm not going to hurt you. I just need you out of the way until everything is settled. Now, let's talk about the Red Rose cards. Simon mentioned that he spread the cards among certain individuals just after summoning you. I think it's safe to assume that a large number of those individuals are his confederates currently located in France. I would, uh, I would like to ask you to enter France from Dover and retrieve those cards for our cause. I would go there myself, however, I'm needed here to maintain our barrier against any invading forces. According to the legend, one must use a le uh, one must use a deck whose cost is lower than that of an opponent's to capture a rose card of another colour. Remember, a deck that costs lower than that of an opponent is the key. I've also heard somewhere that the Celts inherited their red rose cards from the original inhabitants of Stonehenge. This would mean that our enemy, Yugi, who comes from a line of the Welsh nobility, would likely have inherited one of the red rose cards. This means that those who oppose the Rose Crusaders are sufficiently equipped to duel against us as equals. Given our, sorry, given their desperate situation, they'll retaliate with everything they've got. It would be wise not to underestimate them. I'm depending on you. So we are going to immediately have to shuffle our deck around because we had just over a thousand, I think, for our deck cast. We had uh, 994. Okay, so I need to cut out 61 to uh, be able to go and duel tear. Unfortunately, this means we are going to have to nerf our deck a little bit. So, uh, let's see here. What can I afford to get rid of? So, uh, first things first. I'll get rid of an A. Yeah, I'll get rid of an A and a Reaper of the Cards. And a King of Yami Makai, I think. And honestly, that should probably give me enough space to work with. So now I'll put in... Uh, that? No, wait, Kaiser Dragon added way too much. Okay, so I'll add Mega Morph. Okay, I have 37 left to work with. Honestly, just for just for now, I'll put in Masked Sorcerer, the Masked Sorcerer and Witch's Apprentice. If nothing else, I'll be able to get some use out of it because of the, whatchamacallit, the Dark Field. So I can actually get some use out of spellcasters, but you know, I'm primarily using fiends, so uh, we'll see how it goes. The Rose Duelist, you dare to betray the hopes of Prince Yuki. I'll teach you a lesson you'll never forget. So uh, now we duel Tear, who I forget who she's meant to be in history. I think she's meant to be a uh, lady someone of somewhere, but I don't remember exactly who she is. However... Also, let's have a quick look at what the stained glass windows have to say for her. She has uh, Luna Queen Elziam, Petit Angel, Key Mace, Hourglass of Life, and Happy Lover. So, uh, I guess the game didn't really want to give fairy cards the benefit of the doubt in terms of, you know, giving them anything remotely powerful here. So, uh, here's the thing. Without power-ups, Taya does actually use a good few power-ups. Which is probably good, because all of her monsters, just at a base level, none of them go over 2,000. I think her most powerful basic card is 1,900, in the form of Air Knight Parshaf. Like, I know she has Air Knight Parshaf, and Orion the Battle King, and I want to say she also has Gyakuteno Megami. Also, I'll just flip... You know what? I'll just flip these face up, because why not? Also... Despite the fact that her field is very kind of just randomly thrown together, uh, uh, the fairy cards will actually gain a degree. Like, they will actually gain power on the mountains, which is good for her. I'll give her credit on that. It, that is good for her. And also, while I'm here, I will just uh, 
put Paralyzing Potion down here, because, well, whatever that card is, it's the most powerful thing she's summoned, more than likely. It's probably like a Dark Witch or something. She probably fused Dark Witch and then powered it up. Up. So uh, now I know that that's there, and I can probably just wait it out and just uh, summon something powerful and just kind of hit over it. And we'll be able to see in just a moment or two. Also, I could summon... I could just summon Dark Chimera. I'll just summon Dark Chimera, because why not? I definitely don't want it to be on the mountain, though, because that way... Because that way, her fairy monsters do gain the boost, and we'll probably be able to hit over Dark Chimera, uh, to be totally honest. Because, unfortunately for me, Dark Chimera is not the most powerful monster in the world. However... Uh, she is now playing defense. I mean, to be fair, that could just be Spirit of the Harp or something, and Spirit of the Harp does naturally have 2,000 defense. Uh, let's move Wicked Dragon over here. I'll move Barox forward, and I will play a Karibo. I'll just play Karibo face down and see how she approaches it, because I think I'm in a pretty good position here. Realistically, she will attack Karibo. If that's a monster, she should attack Karibo here. There's no reason for her not. Okay, so she attacks my Dark Chimera, and Dark Chimera destroys Doom of the Angel, Angel of Silence. I think that's like the fourth or fifth most powerful monster she can summon. So uh, yeah, things are looking pretty good for me right about now. No, Karibo, Karibo, you can live. Karibo, you, you get to you get to stay here, buddy. Now, I'm actually going to move one tile back, I can, and now I'll flip Yami, and I just realized this has actually, yeah, that now means, um, Dark Chimera doesn't actually get the boost anymore, but you know what, that's fine, I can just move it to here, and regardless of where she moves to, no Dark Chimera can go and intercept. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty much in a position where I now can't lose, because all of her monsters like, all of her monsters will be weakened in the darkness, and, uh, at best, she has to approach me. So, uh, yeah, she has no chance here. I'm not gonna go for the direct attack straight away, though, because I do want to, you know, potentially win a couple more cards. And while we are here, you know what? Let's just power Barox and see what happens. Also, I don't think I've actually seen Barox's attack animation in this game. So let's have a look at it. Dark Witch goes down to 1800. Realistically, it has Paralyzing Potion. Like, it's been hit with Paralyzing Potion. Logically, it shouldn't be able to uh, counter-attack even if I was weaker. But we'll see how a Barox's attack works. I imagine it'll be lightning-based or something. No, it just... Oh, it just runs up and claws at it. Okay. Honestly, that was... Honestly, I was surprised by the attack animation. To be totally honest, I probably should have... Looking at the card art, I probably should have just assumed, oh, it'll just be like a running claw strike. But no, I didn't see that one coming for some reason. And honestly, the kind of death animation for Dark Witch there was surprisingly interesting. Like, that was surprisingly well done. Like, I didn't expect it to do like a full, like, you know... I didn't... I kind of expected it to just fall... Not do, like, an entire spin and everything. That really seemed to be a bit overkill. Now... Now what can I do? I can move that over here. And I can fuse the Neck Hunter with the Job Change Mirror. And this gives me the Summon Skull. Because, once again, uh, if you summon... Basically, if you fuse with the job change mirror, if you use a monster that has less than two, sorry, less than 1600 attack points, that's when you get Ryukushin powered. But if it's over 1600, you get Summon Skull. And I think Summon Skull is like the second most powerful base fiend monster in the game. Sorry, no wait, third most powerful. Uh, it, it's, it, fall, it's, uh, it's 100 points weaker than Zoa. And it's 300 points weaker than Zero Vermant. Although Zero Vermant requires an entire setup. It requires the Zero... It requires the Zero Ritual and King of Yami Makai and two additional Fiend Sacrifices in order to summon it. However, well, Tear is now in a pretty dire situation because my Chimera can just destroy anything. 
Barox is closing in. Uh, she doesn't know what Karibo is, but Karibo's there. Summon Skull is closing in, and also, uh, Two-Headed King Rex is also here, but, you know, that's not exactly... That's not exactly the thing that I think people would be describing as the threat right now. So we just, uh, step on over that. Dark Chimera closes in and destroys that, whatever that was. Those last two cards were... Dark Piercing Light and Winged Trumpeter. Also, Winged Trumpeter would actually be pretty solid to have if you want. Like, if you're running a fairy deck, that is actually a really nice card to have. And now... I'll move Karibo over here, I'll move Barox, I'll move, I'll move my deck leader forward, now I'll move, now I'll power up my Barox, my other Barox, and just move it forward, and now she's uh, kind of blocked in and can't move, can't summon, and therefore is forced to surrender. Honestly, I do kind of hate the fact that the game, like, it'll go, it'll check all of its monsters, everything, everything else, and then it'll surrender. It's just like, no, just surrender on the spot. It just save me, like, five seconds. But with that, we managed to take our first win and earn our first Red Rose card. And also, it really doesn't matter what I win here, so I'm just going to hit all three of these buttons and see what I get. Dark Piercing Light, Key Mace, and Wing Egg Elf. Yeah, those were going to, honestly... You know, I'm using a deck entirely built around fiends. I don't think it really ever was going to make much difference what I got there. But yeah, with that, I guess I lost. It pains, pains me to know I lacked the strength to protect my lord and love. So here's the thing. Uh, despite the fact that we are now playing, like, the villain side of the game, this actually, that story does actually have a bit of a happy ending thought here. Because the person she was, she's, like, meant to represent in history... I think she does actually end up marrying Henry the Seventh. So, uh, you know, there's a little bit of history fun facts for you. And let's uh, quickly shuffle out a couple of cards again, because I have a fair bit of uh, leeway for a, for a little while now. So let's get rid of Masked Sorcerer. That can get out of here. And. Wait, I put Witch's Apprentice in the deck, didn't I? Yeah, I did. Okay. So we can get rid of that as well. Honestly, I'm going to get rid of that and Revival of Dokuru Rider as well. And put in two Kaiser Dragons. Uh, two Kaiser Dragons. It... Actually, that might be a bit much. I think the next duel is like a thousand and something. So I won't have the Faceless Mage in. I won't put the Faceless Mage in just yet. As much as I would like to have it, I'm not going to put it in. And then, actually, I'll take out one of the Kaiser Dragons as well. And instead, we will go for... Uh... Man, I don't know what I'm going to go for. Uh... 10 out of 10. Let's just go for Dark Titan of Terror, I suppose. Uh... Skalgon's maybe a bit much. And... Yeah, this is... You know what, I'll put Eat Gaboon in, because I imagine I'm probably not going to be dealing with too many powerful things. And a Dragon Treasure to power up for Kaiser Dragon, I think. Honestly, maybe I should take out something else that has, like, a cost of 10. And make that a bit more powerful. Oh, whatever. I, I can probably beat the game from... Honestly, as long as I have my Fiends in my power-ups, I think I'm okay for the rest of the game. Hold it! You have one that called Rose Duelist, right? If you want to go any further, you'll have to face me and my Crab Walker strategy. I'll be honest. So, I have played this game quite a lot. I have played through this game probably like 15, 20 times, probably more, on both sides. I still have no idea what this man means by his Crab Walker strategy. Also, his deck leader is Carbonala Warrior. And here's the thing. His stained glass windows are actually insane. Like, like, he has Black Luster Soldier, Gaia the Fierce Knight, Flame Swordsman, Guilty of the Dark Knight, and Celtic Guardian. Like, that is an absolutely insane group. And then it's just like, no, no, none of these. None of these even close. The most powerful card that he has naturally in his deck, I think has a maximum power of, like, 1900 I think I'm pretty sure it's Deep Sea Shark and I think his deck is like all monsters you know I have like one or two spells or traps but I'm pretty sure his entire deck is just monsters so uh pretty much I'm 
So pretty much what I'm trying to say is I'm in a situation where my odds of losing here might as well be zero. Like, genuinely, I would have to try to lose this duel. Especially now that I have my super powerful Fiend deck. And he just, uh, and he just wandered on in and attacked my two-headed King Rex on the Wasteland. Also, yes, there, there is a slight irony to the fact that, uh, I don't think I, yeah, I've, I have a Fiend deck and my two cards on the field are a Dinosaur and a Zombie, but, you know, that's just how it is sometimes. And, okay, we draw Barox, fantastic. I, I just want to keep a hold of Barox. I'll just keep a hold of Barox for now. And I'll go for a direct attack, because realistically... Uh, I don't think there's anything I can win from Tristan that I would want to sit and wait it to uh, pop up. So, uh, yeah. I feel pretty content on just trying to go all in on him. Realistically, I could probably finish him off this turn. And by realistically, I mean I could actually just finish him off right now. However... Where's the fun? I will play... I'll... I don't... Okay. You know what? I... I got overconfident there. Uh, but you know what? I'll give him that tiny win, because now Warrior of Tradition just gets destroyed. And realistically, I don't know, maybe I can get some more. Maybe I can get some more EXP on the Barox this way. Because, uh, honestly, I would quite li I don't know how the deck leader system fully works in this game. Like, I don't know if every monster gets access to the same abilities or what. But I would quite like to be able to, uh, you know, at least partially have a chance of getting something on Barox. I mean, I don't know how it works, to be totally honest, so, uh, your guess is as good as mine. I probably should have looked up a guide on how all that works, because I'm sure that there's some monsters that get absolutely busted ones. But either way, we win next turn, because realistically, he can't do anything to stop me here. Like, what's he gonna do, hit me over the Reaper of the Cards? Actually, if he played, if he played Neo for Magic Swordsman there, he actually could have done that. But now, the Reaper just, uh, takes... It doesn't... Why didn't he just attack? What? I, I don't... I don't understand. I don't get why he didn't just attack there. There was no reason for him to not attack. Like, he could have attacked, destroyed Reaper of the Cards, and still had the advantage. Why is he checking it into defense mode? How is he so stupid? What, what is this game? What is this game's AI? Okay, Barox, kill this man. Barox, please just end this duel. Like, is that, is that the Crab Walker strategy? Just play the stupidest game you can? Because, I because honestly, that seemed to be working for him. Like, confuse the enemy by making pointless, stupid moves. And it doesn't matter what we win here. 10 out of 10, we got Carbonala Warrior. Not like it made any difference. There was three cards in there. Like, we got, we could have gotten... Best thing we could have gotten was probably Sorcerer of, Sorcerer of the Doomed, because that at least would work on our field. Anyway. I don't believe it. You beat the crab out of me. It's like, okay, buddy, dial back, dial it back, dial back the, dial back the puns, just a little bit. Okay, so, now we get to go and duel in Canterbury. So we started in Windsor, then we made it to London, and now we are in Canterbury on the edge of Dover. However, I am going to shuffle the deck around just a tiny bit more. And by that, I mean, I think it may be time to throw in that second Kaiser Dragon. So, deck cost. What, do I have something that's like... I'll get rid of a Wicked Dragon with the Ursat's head and I'll put in Kaiser Dragon. So, I now have two Kaiser Dragons. So, they are going to be on 2800 naturally because of the mountain field of this stage. Anyway, I will explain that when we get there. So, off we go to Canterbury to duel Margaret my Beaufort. So, you're the one who betrayed those who summoned you. I guess I'll have to show you the error of your, ra of your ways. So, this is another part of where the history gets weird. So, basically... 
if I recall correctly from what I remember looking into this, Margaret My Beaufort, she is meant to be a char she's meant to be a character who represents Henry the Seventh's mother. I think. Also, uh, her thing is Harpy Lady and has all of the kind of support cards for it in the form of Elegant Egotist, Cyber Shield, Electro Whip, and the Harpy's Pet Dragon. However, also, a uh, fun little fact, if you look here, you have the censored version of Harpy Lady because it has like the full bodysuit and everything. But on the stained glass window, it's actually like the original card art where it's not censored at all. Just a random little, random little bit of information there. Okay, so, off we go. Now, I just drew Castle of Dark Lucian's turn one. It's over. It's over, I drew Castle of Dark Lucian's turn one. It's over. It's, it's done. Game. That's game. Pack it up. Everyone go home. <laughs> I got my Castle of Dark Lucian's turn one. I basically got my field spell without having to draw my field spell. Like, the only disadvantage to Castle of Dark Lucian's currently is the fact that I don't have the full darkness to work with. To be, to be totally honest, part of me... Like, when I saw Castle of Dark Illusions when I was dueling, uh, when I was doing, like, grinding against... That's... That could be quite a problem, actually. That might be a problem. That could be an issue. Because that's probably a Harpy Lady Sisters with three power boosts. Okay, Harpy Lady Sisters is 1950 naturally. 2450 on the mountain... That is a near 4,000 attack points Happy Lady Sisters coming right at me. I don't like that. I really don't like that. Wait, I can check if it's a Happy Lady Sisters. It's an elegant egotist and a Happy Lady. It is indeed a Happy Lady Sisters. 10 out of 10, nailed it, got it in one. And I think that might be another one. Okay, so, she has two super powerful Harpy Lady Sisters, one at 34.50, one at 39.50. Um, as much as I have all of the confidence in the world in my Castle of Dark Illusions and everything, I think I probably should, uh, maybe start playing a bit defensively. I, I say playing a bit defensively, I haven't moved yet. Oh, also, uh, I, I forgot to actually, like, go back to mention the history. I'm pretty sure the person that Mai is supposed to be here. Uh, I just want to double check to see if that was 3950. I'm pretty sure it should be, right? Yeah, it is 3950. But yeah, the person that Mai is supposed to be here, I think, was meant to be like Henry the Seventh's mother, and I think she also had like some ties to Watchamacallum, to Thomas Stanley, who was who is the guy who Pegasus was. So I guess. In this representation, uh, Mai and Pegasus were a thing, and that ties into Yugi, I guess. This, this is not something that, I, basically, this is a case of, I don't think that it really expected anyone to think about the actual history and everything of the people here. Okay, so I could bring... I could bring A up to 3600. That might be a play. It's probably V play, to be totally honest. But either way, I feel pretty confident right now. Because I know A, I can just tear whatever. So, look, A, I can tear whatever as she plays to shreds currently. Because that Harpy Lady Sisters will eventually be able to move. And then it'll just wander right on into Shadow Spell, which will reduce its attack points by a thousand. So I feel pretty comfortable right about now. I don't think I'm in... Like, I was concerned for a little bit, but now... Now I feel like I'm actually in a control... Like, I feel like I'm now in a position of control, but the game doesn't know I have for control of it yet. So I, so I am currently in a state where I believe I have a massive advantage here. If I lose my Castle of Dark Illusions, however... If I lose my Castle of Dark Illusions, then we're gonna have a problem. Also, while I'm here, I will just uh, move Mammoth Graveyard to here. I'll move Barox over here. Now, I'll play Fiend's Hand, Fuse this, summon up Great Mammoth Goldfine. And now that can start approaching up the edge of the field. 
And then I don't want that to go out into the mountains at all, because it doesn't do well on the mountains. And that's Shadow Spell. Congratulations, you played yourself. So that Happy Lay Sisters is now all the way down to 2950. So we effectively nullified two of the power boosts that she gave it. And now I'm in a position where I should be able to do something about it. If I draw Yami though, that'd be actually super nice. If I could if I could draw my field spell, that would be uh, the most ideal situation for me, I think. So I will throw no way. Uh, Karibo, Karibo, come back here, buddy. Karibo, I'm sorry, but you've currently got to go. To be honest, I don't... To be totally honest, I'm waiting for two things. I'm waiting to get either another better monster that I like more than A at a power up, or my Yami field spell. Because if I can because if I can get my Yami field spell and get that down in like the middle of the field... If I get that in the middle of the field, I'm pretty much sad. Also, I didn't intend on doing that, but okay, here we are. Okay, so I'm on... What? Okay, so I need that. Okay, and that's the set... That is set a square. That is set a square. I am not getting my... Uh, I am not getting myself over there in time. I don't see a world in which I manage to get my field spell to set a square without putting myself in a ton of danger. I mean, I say that, but at the same time, I am absolutely kind of willing to risk it. And uh, I will have Shadow Who Controls the Dark move here, destroy, well, not destroy that, but get rid of that. And now, I might be able to... Okay, no, I, I want it in center square. I, I want it in the center square. I want to put my field spell down in the center square because that like, gives me complete control over the map. However, I know that I, I could take a massive hit from the Harpy Lady Sisters if I do. And I know that I... What if I just power up A and now? I shouldn't, but I should. I hate what I'm gonna have to do. Wait, I can. Never mind. I. Never mind. I have made a smart decision. I can do this. I'll take the hit from Shadow that can. Like, Shadow that controls. The, the, Shadow who controls the dark will take the hit for me. And now, I have complete control over the map. And I can also move Creole and Dark Sh and kind of. And Castle of Dark Illusions pretty quickly on towards the darkness, which uh, is obviously extremely important because I kind of need those, but I need to get rid of those harpies first. And I just made my, I just made all my fiends weaker because I moved to castle, but you know what? That's fine. I can live with it. I can live with my castle being a tiny bit weaker for two turns. And now, well, it is now time to get rid of some harpies. It's now time to get rid of some harpies and start playing offense, because realistically, I am in a position where I can play offense now. I mean, I still don't really want to, though. Wait, I know what I can do. I can move Great Mammoth of Goldfine to there. I can move Barox up to here. I can move my castle to here, and I can move Creole to here. Okay, I'm now safe. I'm safe, I can't take damage this turn. And yes, I'm sure that the logical statement is, why isn't he playing Aether? He should just play Aether. Why is he not playing it? And the answer is, I, I want to play something else if I can. But at the same time, I know I shouldn't. I know for a fact that I should not. So, what I will do is I will compromise on that, I suppose. And I'll attack and destroy Punished Eagle. But yeah, I definitely need to move and destroy those harpies right now, otherwise I do just lose. Because I don't want to move forward here, because I'll potentially be in, like, punished eagle range or whatever. So as much as I don't want to, I'm going to have to power up. I'll have to power up A ever once and destroy the harpy lady sisters. Okay, it's only going to be 150 damage. 
But yeah, to be totally honest, I was kind of hoping that I'd be able to draw barracks and then wait, barracks plus 500 from the field, plus 500 from the castle, plus a thousand. Yeah, that'd be up to like 3300. That would be able to do it for me. And also, we still have higher defense. And with that, A uh, just uh, destroys the Harpy Lady Sisters about five, six turns later than it could have. But with that, all three Harpies are just gone in one. 10 out of 10. And we are now much, much safer. And also, I now have a very powerful monster on the field, but you know who's counting. Uh, well, more accurately, I have a very powerful monster on the field that won't be weakened when it goes onto a mountain. Because, uh, currently the mountain field is kind of the issue. Monster Reborn, she just summons her harpies back. She just summoned her harpies back, but they don't have any of the power-ups. So that, so that is, like, base stats, Harpy Lady Sisters. Which, obviously, is significantly less scary. And this is exactly what I was waiting for. Well, not exactly, but I'll take it. So now we fuse that, summon skull powers up once, summon skull powers up twice, and now we get to play a bit of offense. Also, Creel can go into defense mode. Oh, so it can actually amp things. So now, summon skull can just uh, wander on over. No. Oh. Oh, that's... That's minorly infuriating, to be honest. So, I just stepped over Curse Breaker, which is basically Dispel. So, in in terms of practicality, I used all those cards to power up Summon Skull, and then Summon Skull just couldn't do anything about it. Summon Skull couldn't do anything with it because it just lost them immediately. But hey, uh, she crashed Monstrous Bird into it, so Monstrous Bird is about to get uh, roasted, basically. I will say, I do like how Monstrous Bird is just a giant eagle. I think that's really cool. I will say, I I don't know if a card existed at the time of this game coming out, but one card I always liked was Rock from the Valley of Haze. That was a card I always liked. Also, Summon Skull about to just uh, use its lightning powers and uh, just blast this Monstrous Bird, I suppose. And lightning, and okay. Great, but can we do without the white flashes on screen, please, game? Okay, so Monstrous Bird gets brought down. I will remember to. I will uh, hopefully remember to do a slight bit of editing so that doesn't. So just like, you know, slightly darken the screen. You know, just on the off chance that that could cause an issue. And net. Oh. Uh. What can I destroy here? Uh. I think I get rid of my Mammoth, actually. I get rid of my Great Mammoth of Goldfine here. Because I can now win the duel. Wait, I could have won anyway. Oh, oh well, whatever. So now I power up a Kaiser Dragon with Magamorph, flip it face up, and just uh, crash it into Harpy Lady. It would normally only do 3100, but because of Creole's effect, we do 200 more damage. And with that, we win. And I can probably win some okay cards. Also, I'm very relieved that I won that first try because my was a duel that I always remembered struggling with as a kid. Okay, so what do I want to win here? I think Gust Fan would probably be a big win. So we got Harpy Lady. We got Harpy Lady. Honestly, I might as well try for all three. So. Okay, I want to go when it's on follow wind, I think. Okay, you know what? It's not perfect, but I'll take it. <laughs> but hey, I got Happy Lady and Elegant Egotist, so I can't really complain about it too much. I mean, I can still complain about it because I messed that up so badly, but whatever. Losing to the like X of you makes my skin crawl. You... Uh, you, sh uh, you shall not be so lucky when you reach the continent, for Yugi and his followers are a force to be reckoned with. I mean, you say that, but I have my cool fiend deck, and I like my cool fiend deck. But with that, we have now reached Dover. And I am going to actually end off today's episode here. So next time, we are going to be making our way to Dover across the, I got, uh, what should we call it, the channel, across the channel. 
and arriving in France. So, as always, feel free to leave a comment and click any buttons down below if you feel so inclined. And I will hopefully see you all next time for more Duel Sub Okay, thanks for watching. Later.